around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, don't give a man a chance to tend to his business. I. Oh, oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? No, I'd like a room. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I have a nice one, second floor front. If you would just sign the register. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, uh. There, that's fine. I, I didn't mean to sound out of sorts. No, it's quite all right. I thought it was one of them cow hands pestering for something again. Can you tell me where I can find Dr. Adams? Dr. Adams? Yeah. Well, sure. Oh, say, I sure hope you ain't ailing. <laughs> no, no, I feel fine. Well, that's good. Doc Adams ain't exactly what you'd call fancy, but, oh, I suppose he's all right for ordinary doctor. Uh, can you direct me to his office? Oh, yes, sir, I certainly can. Now, you go down to the end of the block, uh-huh. across the street and up the stairs... On the side of the building, uh, and there's a sign. Uh, Dr. C. Adams, it says. Yes, uh, thank you. Now, if you'll see that my bag is taken up to my room. Oh, I certainly will do that, Mr. Uh, uh, Weber. Dr. Weber. Oh, good day. Yes, certainly, Dr. Weber. Now, there's a man that looks like a doctor ought to look. Pardon me, sir. How's that? I I wonder if you could give me some information. What do you want to know, mister? I'm looking for Dr. Adams. That's his office up there. Uh, yes, I've just been there, but he isn't in. He ain't, huh? I was hoping you might know where I could find him. I ain't got no use for a doctor. Oh, I see. Well, in that case... Uh, I looked in the Long Branch. The Long Branch? Saloon, down the street there. Oh, no, no, I haven't. Doctor's likely to be there as anywhere else. He spends a lot of time there. I see. Much obliged. It must be a slow day in Dodge to get both of you in here in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, don't tempt fate. Well, oh, Kitty, you better not talk about it or the whole town might bust loose. Well, that happens every Saturday night. And I just assumed it didn't happen on a Wednesday. Me too, Matt. Patching up a bunch of brawling cow hands isn't my idea of a quiet weekend. Yeah, maybe we could get Kitty to stop selling whiskey, Doc. Well, well, that might quiet things down a little bit. How about <laughs> that, Kitty? Well, if you two would guarantee to support me for the rest of my life, I... Uh... Are you looking for somebody, mister? Uh, yes, I am looking for Dr. Adams. 
Well, I'm Dr. Adams. Well, how do you do? My name is Weber. Dr. William Weber. Oh. Uh, pleased to meet you. This is, this is Kitty Russell. Russell? Hello, Doctor. Uh, Marshal Dillon. Marshal. Doctor. Um... Would you care to sit down, Dr. Weber? Well, thank you, Miss Russell. Actually, I have come to talk business with Dr. Adams. Oh, well, in that case, Doctor, we'll leave the table to you. Won't we, Matt? Well, sure, Kitty. Oh, please, no, I didn't mean oh, to. Oh, we'd be glad to. Now, just wait a minute, Kitty. I I have an office of my own. Yeah, you do it that. And I can conduct my business affairs there. So, you just come with me, Dr. Weber. Certainly, Dr. Adams. Good day, Miss Russell. Marshal. Bye. So long. <laughs> Doc sounded kind of huffy to me. Ah, he's not huffy, Kitty. It's his professional pride. He doesn't often get a chance to show it. What is a newsman's first duty? His prime responsibility. It can be summed up in three words. Get the story. To get that story requires ingenuity and resourcefulness. His integrity prevents him from slanting a story for sensationalism's sake. Good newsmen view their responsibility as one which requires them to convey word of the day's events with speed, accuracy, and objectivity. That's the reputation gained by CBS newsmen through many years of bringing the news to CBS radio listeners from coast to coast. Today, as for decades, you're always sure of getting the news fast, first, via CBS News on CBS Radio. Ah, come right in, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, uh, sit down. Oh, uh, here. Uh, uh, thank you. Well, it's never easy to learn of an old friend's death. We doctors run into it all the time, but it's never easy. Yes, I'm sorry to bring the news, Dr. Adams, but Dr. Wilson wanted it that way. You must have been very close at one time. Yes, yes, very close. Henry and I went through medical college together. Yes, I started up in practice, and then the war came, and... Life has many dislocations, Dr. Weber. It does indeed. My purpose in coming here, Dr. Adams, was not merely to bring you the unhappy news of Henry Wilson's death. It was to outline some of his last wishes. They concern you. Concern me? Yes, sir. Dr. Wilson wanted your help. Well, I don't know what you're getting at, Dr. Weber. It doesn't make sense. Successful man like Henry Wilson wanting help from me? It's because of his success. Well, I don't understand. Yes, well, Dr. Wilson had established a clinic in Philadelphia. Yes, I've heard of it. That's why I'm here. He wanted you to take charge of it after his death. He, uh, He wanted me? Hmm. He had a high professional opinion of you, Dr. Adams. Oh, we, we handled some interesting cases together... <laughs> Very interesting. But even more than your professional ability, Dr. Wilson respected your judgment in handling people. Well, I, I don't understand. Uh, there are some fine young doctors at his clinic, but he felt the man in charge should be an older doctor. Well, I'm older, all right. A man of seasoned judgment as well as professional skill. A man of varied experience. Well, a man like you, Dr. Adams. I see. It would mean a life of greatly increased medical opportunity for you. Advanced methods, research, and uh, it would mean a life of greater, uh, well, comfort. Well, that would be something, wouldn't it? Uh, after all these years, a chance to go back to practice medicine as I started out to practice it. It would be a position of considerable importance and influence, Dr. Adams. And I should think of considerable financial satisfaction. Dr. Wilson wanted to be sure the job was attractive to you. He wanted you to come. Yes, uh, that would be something. Uh, Doc! Doc! Uh, come in, boy. It's Billy. Oh! It's his arm, Doc. Moss said you was to look at it. Oh, well, sure. Sure. Come on in, Billy. Well, you won't be able to ride that new coat with a bum arm, will you? All right, then, come in. Come in. 
It won't hurt you none, Billy. Uh, now then, boy, let's have a look at it. Oh, yes, uh, Looks like you've fallen off that coal already. That's right, Doc. He sure did. Well, we'll have to put this back together for you then, Billy. Oh, Dr. Weber, would you mind getting some gauze and splints out of that cupboard over there? Well, yes, yes, certainly. Now, let's see here, Billy. I guess the first thing to do is to get that shirt off. Here they are, Dr. Adam. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. All right now, Billy. We'll fix you up as good as new. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Bye. Bye, boys. Ah, the youngsters stood that very well, didn't they? Oh, they have to learn to stand things when they're young and on the prairie. It's a harsh land. Well, you know, Doctor, if you stop to think of the proposal I brought with me... I've been thinking of it. <laughs> life wouldn't be quite so harsh in Philadelphia. <laughs> Though I must say, little boys break their arms there, too. Well, they always did. <laughs> yes, Dr. Weber, uh, life would be easy. That's not what I'm thinking about the most. It's the thought of the equipment, the chance to use the latest method, to talk things over with doctors, be near libraries. <laughs> I'd have to learn how to act, Dr. Weber. Oh. No, Dr. Wilson didn't worry about that. Ah, uh, Henry was an old and faithful friend. Doc! Doc! All right, Chester, all right. What's the trouble? Hey, uh, well, Doc, there's a fellow that was just rung into jail, and he'd been shot, and Mr. Dillon said for you to come. Was it bleeding bad, Chester? Oh, my, yes, like a stuck hog. Oh, I'll be right there. Now, this is Dr. Weber, Chester. Hello, oh, Chester. Hi, Doctor. <laughs> well, I reckon I'll get back downstairs. Yeah, but go on, Chester, go on. I'm coming out. Here's your bag, Dr. Adams. Oh, thank you, thank you. Say, you'd make a good assistant, Dr. Weber. <laughs> oh, would you like to come with me? I would indeed. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes these gunshot wounds cause a lot of trouble. Even if they don't hit a vital spot, you know, bleeding, infection, in constant danger, a locked jaw. Yeah. Uh, a gun can cause many problems. Yeah. Too many, Dr. Weber. Dr. Adams? Dr. Adams? Oh, hello, Miss Hoffman. I was just coming to see you, Doctor. Uh, it'll have to be a little later then, Mrs. Hoffman. Oh, uh, it ain't that I need you, Dr. Adams. I just want to thank you. Why, there ain't hardly anybody who'll believe I'm up and around so soon. Well, it's fine, fine, but we're in kind of a hurry And, now. baby, you wouldn't know there'd been a bit of trouble about him. He's eating like he was trying to catch up with his paws. Well, that's good, Miss, but uh, you'll have to excuse me now. Because... I just wanted to say a word of thanks to you, Doctor. Bonnie likes the chance to say a thanks. <laughs> Sounds like a satisfied customer. Pluvia placenta. Uh, that was a dangerous delivery, Doctor. She's lucky. You can't very well afford to specialize, can you, Doctor? <laughs> I specialize in Dodge City. Uh, let's see about that bullet wound. <laughs> Exactly Philadelphia food, Dr. Weber, but uh, it keeps us going. Oh, all doctors learn to eat when they get the chance. Though I must say, our pace is generally slower than yours. Uh, I dare say. Your morning has been rather... <laughs> full. A broken arm, a bullet wound, a pair of twins. Uh, don't forget the sick horse I <laughs> I'm not likely to forget that. No, seriously, Dr. Adams, don't you think... The practice I can offer you in Philadelphia would give you a more productive life. Well, I'm trying to get the time to think about it, Dr. Weber. I can't deny that it is an interesting idea. It's very interesting. The opportunity... Well, the opportunities for participating in medical advances would be tremendous. And I should think most satisfying... And there's something else, Doctor, that I don't wish to sound presumptuous. Oh, don't you worry about it. I know. <laughs> I'm getting older. It's just that life might be easy. Doc. Yeah, Doc. It, it's Mary. She's fainted dead away. I, I can't rouse her. Where is she? Well, she's out to the place. I, I had a ride to get you. Oh. All right, Tom. Go on back to her. I'll come. Right away, Doc? Yeah, right away. Oh. 
Oh, you stay on and finish your dinner, Doc. Well, certainly not. I don't want to miss any of this. of athlete's foot grow down here, down under the skin surface. But NP27 treatment penetrates down where other remedies can't reach. Roots out athlete's foot. Even penetrates into toenails. NP27 stops itch, relieves pain, promotes growth of healthy skin, guards against new infection. NP27 treatment roots out athlete's foot or your druggist will refund your money. Get NP27 treatment. Oh, Doc. Doc, I'm glad you got here so fast. She's, uh, roused some, but it hurts her awful bad. All right, Tom. Oh, this is Dr. Wilbur from Philadelphia. Hello. We'll look at it together. Hello, Tom. Doc? Yes, Tom? You sure this fellow's a good doctor? I'm sure he is, Tom. Let's go. Is he as good as you are, Doc? Well, most people say he was better. I'd want to be sure before he seen Mary. You can be sure. Okay. I'll, I'll tell her you're here. <laughs> Thanks for your recommendation, Doctor. A man wouldn't get far without it. No, they just know me. In here, Doc. Hello, Mary. This is Dr. Weber. Doc. Doc. Can you help me? If you'll let me. You mean that operation? Well, I told you, Mary. You, you should have had it before. It's the only chance you've got. Tom? I, I can't say no again, Mary. You just took too bad. You go ahead, Doc. Will you assist me, Dr. Wilson? I'd be proud to, Dr. Adams. Dr. Adams. Dr. Adams. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I I was thinking. I, I, I wondered if you'd noticed... Well, it looks to me like, uh, like I got an Indian waiting there by the road. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I see him. Well, I, I, I guess the best way is to pay no attention to him, isn't it? Uh, oh, oh no, uh, no, 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 Dr. Adams. Uh, uh, he wants to talk to me. Well, are you sure you should? Well, hello, Strongbird. I bring robe. That is a fine robe, Strongbird. You killed a big buffalo. The robe is for my son's eyes. You didn't need to bring a gift, Strongbird. I was glad to help you. White doctor brings sight back to son. Strongbird brings thanks from his people. Well, you tell your people that they're welcome. I thank them for the robe. Yeah. Strongbird, go. Dr. Webber, uh, can you hold this robe for me? Mm hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, yes, certainly. Dr. Adams, you treat Indians too? Well, only when they let me, Dr. Webber. <laughs> only when they let me. Dr. Adams. Yes? We have a lot of things to offer you in Philadelphia, but I was wrong about one thing. We can't offer you more variety. I have seen some astounding things today. I just watched you perform a delicate and dangerous operation under the crudest circumstances and perform it with as much skill as though you had the latest equipment. Well, you learn to use what you've got, Dr. Weber. And... 
I've seen you receive thanks from the wild Indians. Oh, Indians are people. <laughs> you know, I wasn't so sure at first, Dr. Adams. But now I know. We would be very lucky to have you in Philadelphia. If you feel you can come. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come, but... But you're not coming, are you? No, uh, I guess I'm not. A man has to stay where he's needed. I haven't made much of a mark in medicine. Then maybe I'd have more of a chance of that, but, uh... But I'm needed here, Dr. Webb. I'm needed here. Can you understand that? I can understand it, Dr. Adams. And I can even envy you. Here's your bag, Dr. Weber. Thank you. And here's the payment for my bill. Thank you, sir. I hope you had a pleasant stay in Dodge City. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. It was certainly a pleasure having a man like you visit us. I hope you'll come again. Thank you. We don't get a chance to see a fine doctor in Dodge very often. Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Doby. Yes, you do. Every day. we are of being the CBS Radio Network to be able to bring you on this station each weekday the songs of Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney. In addition to the sparkling Bing Crosby, Rosemary Clooney show, we're equally delighted to present at this same address each weekday the assorted talents of Art Linkletter, the house party man, Gary Moore and Durwood Kirby, and the rousing Arthur Godfrey time. There's no business like show business, and nowhere else such a fine sampling of the same than on this blockbuster CBS Radio Network entertainment fest. Nicest thing about it is, should you miss any or all of these great stars on a Monday, you can catch right up with them the next day, or any weekday you're so inclined. Remember, nowhere else can you enjoy, each and every weekday, the Bing Crosby Rosemary Clooney Show, the conversational gifts of Gary Moore and his perfect foil, Durward Kirby, the kids' comedy and cut-ups of Art Linkletter's House Party, and the air of glee with gusto that's a specialty of Arthur Godfrey time. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Ralph Moody, Sam Edwards, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. The laughs are on Arthur Godfrey every weekday on the CBS Radio Network.